guys. Welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. I am Kimberly Scott. This is my hunky husband, Tim. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. boy. Oh, boy. And we are, here we are on a beautiful San Diego afternoon, and yes. it's sunny outside, but we're inside chilling. Yeah. Chilling with you, and we're glad you're joining us today. And we've been in a series lately, and uh, let, me, let me, before I say what the series is about, I'll just preface it by saying that <laughs> Tim and I grew up in the church, and... Uh, some of you have too, some of you have not, but a lot of dumb things are said inside and outside of the church. It's true. But but we in particular have called this series, Dumb Things Christians Say, because there's a lot of dumb things we've said and yeah. we've heard said in the church. Yes. And so in our first week, we talked about uh, one of the dumb things people say when someone is experiencing loss is God needed another angel in heaven. And the motives are sweet and positive right. and, you know, sending good vibes and all yes. that stuff. But it doesn't, it, it's kind of... A, Just needs clarification. It needs clarification, as so many things do. And the second week was God will never give you more than you can handle, which... We debunked because we know that that's just not true. Yeah. We experience things we can't handle all the time, which puts us in a position to need God more, and uh, he shows up, right. which is beautiful. So today... We're going to talk about Christians should never judge. Yeah, That's, that's a, a dumb thing that Christians we say. Judge, yes. You should never judge. Right. Just not true. Uh, by the way, on uh, if, if you missed our podcast on... Um, God needed another angel. We, I kind of ground down into a discussion about angels, and it was pretty, pretty uh, intense. We maybe, went deep maybe, fast. Yeah, we went deep fast. <laughs> angels but, and demons. We but went I think there. it's important to understand who who angels are. I don't yeah. think Christians really know. Anyway, we do a whole series little, on that. Little plug for that. That was uh, episode fifty four. Yeah. So anyway, this is episode fifty six. Christians should never judge. Yes. Uh, so let's think about whether Christians should judge. Um, judging has needs some explanation because we actually are called to judge each other, but we don't reject each other mm. and we don't condemn each other. Mm -hmm. And we, we judge behavior, but we don't judge people so much. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, and, and I think that if you don't judge behavior, then anything will go. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you'll remember uh, several weeks ago during the um, Super Bowl, mm -hmm. there was this huge um, reaction. Show. Yeah, for the halftime show, there was this huge reaction against uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Yeah. Uh, Shakira, and, Shakira. And we all saw it because <laughs> everybody saw it. And uh, this is what came to mind. Yes, it was very risque. That's a word I use because yeah. I'm old. Yeah. Because so I can use the risque. word risque. When's the last time you heard that? <laughs> well, it's 1947. <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it was very risque. There was, and there's been other risque things. We need to be very careful uh, about this. I didn't plan on talking about this, but yeah, I'm going there. Are you going ready? Down the rabbit hole. So here's here's <laughs> the thing that I think brings balance to it. Number one, uh, the Latin culture was on display at that Super Bowl, which was, yes. and which is, and it Fiery, was great. Passionate, listening amazing, to songs, lively, yes. yeah, listening to songs though in Spanish, I really thought that was awesome. Yeah, uh, some of the uh, the movements and so forth were very sexualized, but if you don't qualify uh, your criticism of that, mm -hmm. it's going to sound racist. Mm -hmm. And I understand why some people have pushed back and say, uh, you're just, you're a racist. Cause mm -hmm. there have been other non Latin, uh, Latinas that have done that or right, non African hits, American right. that haven't taken that hit. Yeah. It, and it's, it's a little weird to me that we don't qualify. So be careful what you say, because uh, it may come across the way that you don't intend it. Yes, I think it's legitimate for us to say, as it was probably crossed the line and it was lewd, uh, probably in a different show, it would have been something that you wouldn't have been watching with your whole family. So anyway, I say that because when we talk about judging something, yeah. there was a lot of judgment went now, on let that let me tell day. you where my... Where my uh lens went to with all of that as a 53 year old woman all i could think of was j-lo is goals yeah. at 50 years and old. unfortunately so. all the men were going j-lo yes, is goals is. different different <laughs> idea so anyway all right so i i didn't mean to get off on that except to say that 
when we judge people, we need to be very clear uh, what our concern so, and is. And I think that... And how helpful I it is. I think that... Um, this is my opinion. Tell me if I'm wrong, Professor Scott. Yeah, well, whatever. But I feel like even in judging, you obviously have to go back to step back to saying, okay, what is my what is my moral foundation? If it's if it's truth being the word of God, then that is actually the judge of someone's behavior. And so you're not actually judging. His word does that, that is for you. That is a really, really important point. Because, yeah, otherwise... So if you're the judge, then it's based on your sensibilities... Your preferences. Your yeah. preferences and your personal convictions. Right, right. Whereas when you... Just restating what you yeah. said. When it's the word of God, you're going to someone and saying, here's what the Bible says. Yes. Here's your behavior. Those don't match. Right. So look and, at your reflection in the word as a mirror and, yeah. and and don't and my other thing is if you can't judge a non-believer by something that they don't that's, apply their lives to that's exactly what i was going to say i was going to say are you expecting a halftime show right to not have to you know famous malfunction yes. uh, that took wardrobe place malfunctions wardrobe years ago, yeah. mal Janet malfunction <laughs> and you've got these different things we yeah. we've seen some pretty risque there's yeah. that word again uh, performances. I don't expect the world to behave right. according to my principles, right. but I, scripture. I think also, and just to be clear, you have every right to speak out mm -hmm. and you have every right to protest against things like that because it is an embarrassing. I was sitting there with my wife and my daughter yeah. and my sons weren't there. Uh, they were watching it somewhere else. Those evil men <laughs> anyway. So, uh, but I was embarrassed. Here's the thing. It's a family event. Football games yeah. always have been. Right. It's not age appropriate. Yeah. So regardless of whether you're looking at through the lens of scripture or you don't have any faith in anything, if you have a little kid there, it's probably not appropriate for them to see right. some of those moves. So it's, yeah, I just feel like it, it, we get so on our high horse about judging sometimes we're holding them to a mm -hmm. standard yeah. that they've never held to themselves. So, yeah. And, and God, God said this, don't judge the world. That's not our job. You, there you go. we are to discern, we are to, to judge each other in terms of our behavior, not the world. And, What's uh, each other? Just define that. So other believers, right. people that, in, in fact, people that are committed to your community. To living community. by truth and scripture. And, well, people that are in your community. Mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous for you to go to another church body and start judging the believers there. Mm -hmm. um, you should allow that to happen within the context of that local church. Now, if you work with other believers, I think it's fair for you to call to account their behavior in front of especially non-believers. Mm -hmm. But let's get into this idea because I, I didn't mean to get sidetracked with that, but it kind of is relevant. Here's that dumb thing that Christians say. Christians should never judge. Of course we should judge. But where does that come from? Mm -hmm. Jesus was teaching uh, in Matthew chapter 7. It says, judge not that you be not judged. So judge, if you don't want to be judged, don't mm -hmm. judge. Mm -hmm. Then it says this in verse two of Matthew seven, for with judgment you pronounce, you will be judged for with the same judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Mm. So if you show mercy in another place, he shares, if you show mercy, you'll receive mercy. If you have judgment, you'll receive judgment. You condemn, you'll be condemned. Mm. So that kind of that law of Sowing reciprocity. And, and reaping, yeah. So if that's the whole thing that you had, in Matthew chapter seven, mm -hmm. then we'd kind of say, well, maybe we shouldn't judge anybody, mm -hmm. but here's the difference. The difference is between rejection of someone mm -hmm. judging something with rejection or, or judge, excuse me, judging someone with rejection versus judging someone's behavior to be an assistant to them, mm -hmm. to help them, to encourage them. Parents do that. Mm -hmm. We have right. to discern our children's behavior to call them to a better uh, alternative future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you mind reading, uh, yeah. the second Matthew, part of that Matthew seven, seven, three. three, it says, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye, you hypocrite. That's strong language. Yeah. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. 
And boy, here's something interesting about judgmental people I've noticed in my life. Yeah. The ones that are the harshest and the most uh, critical within the church and without of the church are usually the ones that are, to be honest with you, like bogged down with their own mm-hmm. issues. Yeah. And so I don't know if it's a deflection thing, but over time, those things play out. It's happened with leaders over mm-hmm. and over yeah. again, the ones that are hardest and harshest without the, with grace. One, one of the most glaring was Jimmy Swagger judging yes. his fellow pastor and exposing him for having extramarital affair. And then that guy actually yeah. turned around, got a, um, what do you call a private investigator mm-hmm. to follow Jimmy Swagger. And that's how he was. Busted, yeah. And they both apologized and yeah. they both, you know, tried right. to make it right with the Lord. And I'm not judging where they are now, but that kind of hypocrisy. Right. I, th- I think of it, you know, the beam in the eyes kind of like, here, yeah. you're walking around <laughs> like this. Okay. What, are, let me see what's wrong with your yeah. eye there. Let me get that. Yeah. How many times have you had to take something out of your children's eye mm. and you have to really have good vision. You have to be able to really see see what the problem is you have to carefully so you don't harm the eye you have to be up close Mm -hmm. it's personal it is for a specific goal and that is to relieve Mm -hmm. the pain of the speck that's in the eye. And it requires trust from the yeah, child to the right. parent, which and, again... And you won't have it with a big beam hanging out yeah, of Yeah, so that's a beautiful picture of how yeah. we're supposed to approach that in someone that we, in the circles that we influence. If you are coming into their life to, and your intention is to draw them closer to the Lord, right. you don't get there by, uh, f- you know, screaming judgmental things at them. Right. Well, this, and so let's go back to the statement. This is what we're talking about. um, This dumb statement that Christians make, it really just needs clarification. And that is you shouldn't judge others, never judge a brother. Well, this is clearly saying after saying, judge not lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. He explains what he means. Don't reject them because you'll be rejected. In verse three, he starts telling us about the speck and the beam. If you have a beam in your eye and you're trying to remove a speck, You see, he is calling us to judge. Mm. You are discerning that the person has a speck in their eye. Mm. If you don't judge, you don't know. Right. So you're not rejecting them. You're assisting them. Mm -hmm. And here's the rule of thumb. And we've already said it a couple of times. If you really want to uh, understand how you are to judge other people, Mm -hmm. other Christians, Mm -hmm. first of all, don't judge Mm non-believers. But when you're going to judge a brother or sister in Christ, You're doing it for the purpose of assisting them, encouraging them. We have that in Matthew chapter 18. Mm -hmm. And that Matthew chapter 18, if somebody uh, transgresses against you, sins Mm -hmm. against you, you go to them in private. Mm -hmm. So again, you're being careful not to expose them Mm -hmm. because you don't want other people to shame them and reject them. So you're you're, uh, maintaining their privacy. If you have exhausted everything that you can in Matthew 18, it's verses 15 through 17. If you've exhausted everything that you can and they still don't respond, that's the point when you bring two or three witnesses to establish every word, not to be on your side, but to establish, because you might be wrong. Explain that to most people, what establish every word. Establish the facts. Yes. So let's say uh, we're in a dispute with, with somebody. In that dispute, I I become subjective. I become defensive. So he said, she said. Well, no, and... it's you on that person. You're you two are involved in this. This isn't a hearsay. You know, you took this money. You said you were going to give me this hundred dollars back in a week. Mm-hmm. It's been six months. You've never even mentioned it. I brought it up to you. You won't pay me the money back. Mm-hmm. And then you find out, in fact, you were paid the money back. So maybe you just weren't seeing it clearly. Two or three witnesses will establish the fact. Why didn't you pay him back? I did pay him back. When did you pay him back? Is there a way to establish that? Yeah, here's the receipts. So, you know, when you get into a debate with somebody, Mm -hmm. it becomes very subjective, Mm -hmm. very self-centered, very quick, very Mm -hmm. personal and emotional very quickly. So you don't 
see the facts anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've done that in our <laughs> conversations. We've like, yeah. you know, we're talking along and we both think we're right. And <laughs> we usually realize that you were right and I was wrong, whatever. Yeah, right. And you, <laughs> right, of course, exactly. you do have a beam in your eye, but I got this little speck, <laughs> please help. Anyway, so th- this idea that uh, we're never to judge is not what Jesus is saying right. in verses one and two of Matthew mm-hmm. seven. Verses three, four, uh, and five explain how we're to do it. Mm-hmm. Matthew 18, Jesus explained that we're to, to maintain privacy, mm-hmm. get witnesses so that we can establish the facts. And then it goes on from there. Galatians chapter six, he gives a qualification. He said, those who have been overtaken in a fault, mm-hmm. you who are spiritual mm-hmm. restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, mm-hmm which means means that you're unaffected. Yeah. Yeah, Gentle. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about them. It's not, not about any problems you have. It's about helping a person move forward. But the caveat is you have to be spiritual. Yeah. So it's pretty clear that we are to judge, but we're not to reject. We're not to condemn. So here's, here's something I'm gonna throw in before we close this is that a lot of times people will ask you loaded questions wanting to hear your opinion, quote unquote, judgment on, you know, whatever, socially relevant or whatever, and corner you. So one of the tricks I've learned through the years, because your goal is to get near someone, to have relationship and to lean into, and by answering that incorrectly, automatically you can marginalize them or yourself in the Mm -hmm. process. So... One of the things that's helped me in the past is I can say, you know, um, it's not really my opinion that matters, but I will tell you that I'm a Christ follower. And according to scripture, this mm. is what it says about yeah, that's this. Good. So then I'm not the bad guy anymore. And if it's something that they disagree with, maybe they don't. And um, one of my other favorite things is when someone will come at you with a harsh question or like trying to pinhole you, you know, one of my f- favorite things to say, you know, I, I didn't get asked to, to go up on the cross and be nailed on a cross. So really my opinion doesn't matter. And I'm really grateful. I'm not in a position of having to be the judge. Hmm. That's up, that's up to the Lord, you know? Yeah. I think if you can avoid, um, judging non-believers and given marginalizes and throws people in boxes, you come off as a moralist and moralists are rarely point people to Christ. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to say, this is what God says, Mm -hmm. like you said, this is what God says. You're not the moralist. God, who has the right, who created us, has the right to speak to that. Then, But understand, he's given a way Mm -hmm. that our sin can be forgiven. So. Right. And even, even with the Bible, a lot of people call you Bible thumpers or whatever. My way of describing is, look, you know, um, I... It's not about me, but according to scripture, which is his love letter to us, how we can live our best life, yeah. it'll explain to you why he, right. he has said what he said, you mm-hmm. know, so you're not, they're not feeling like you're sitting there with the gavel and the judges, you know, up there deciding what's right and wrong for their life. But, um, you're gently showing them there's another way. You yeah. Know? Show grace and mercy and love. And love yes. Uh, and speak constantly. Truth. Yeah. yeah. You can speak truth in love. Um, I, I remember, and I, I've shared this story before in many different uh, venues, but, uh, that's this, a, a woman asked me, would you speak to my son about his sexual behavior? He's being promiscuous. And I said, well, does he know Jesus as mm-hmm. savior? And she said, no, but I think he will respect you <laughs> talking about his bad morals. And I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to him about Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, but I, there's no way I'm going to talk to him about his, his morality. That's, I I really would like people to understand that Christ came for sin. Now understand, I'm not saying you should never talk about sin Mm -hmm. to non-believers, but don't bring up sin without a remedy. Mm -hmm. The remedy is Christ. Mm -hmm. So share with them. Sin is the symptom. Yeah. The remedy is Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So here's here's uh, just the way to remember, and we'll close with this, and that is that when you um, judge, and you should judge, you should judge not in terms of rejection. That's what we're being warned about by Jesus in the first two verses, but that we should judge for assistance mm-hmm. to help their life to be better. 
and graciously and patiently and privately deal with them to the extent that we're helping them and uh, grow and mature at whatever speed yeah, they, they want to. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, we should probably say goodbye. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us this yeah. week and uh, for this series. It's been fun. Yeah. If you have any more suggestions, let us know. And, and, and we got some more. Yeah. We got some more dumb things to say. Yeah, I no, them. I mean, we have some more dumb things that Christians <laughs> say. So we'll we'll get into those next time. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week at Hope Rescue Podcast. God bless.